If you're a person doing your family history, I'm going to tell you, you're very lucky if your forebears happen to be a, a, a soldier settler. Because one thing the soldier settlement scheme did do is it left massive amounts of paper. Paper, paper, paper. Now, I've, I'm lucky today, I've got the file of a very famous Australian, John McEwen, who went on to become Deputy Pro, uh, Prime Minister of Australia. Um, he was Minister for Trade for most of the 50s and 1960s. And he started his farming career as a soldier settler. Um, now, we can learn a lot about his career as a soldier by going to his soldier settlement file. And if we go to the very bottom, we'll find his qualification um, certificate uh, to become a soldier settler. And if I can just, uh, just find the qualification certificate, um, what the qualification certificate will tell you is how old he was, how tall he was, uh, it will tell you what his war service was. Uh, and so what it's doing, it's telling you what his qualifications to be a soldier settler are. Um, it's telling you that he has served in the Imperial forces and deserves to be a soldier settler. Um, it'll also give you some indication of whether you know, he, he's going to be a success on the land because it might tell you um, what his occupation was before he was a soldier settler. So in the, class, in the, in the case of uh, John McEwen, um, in his file, we know that before the war, before he joined up, um, he was a clerk which probably isn't a very good qualification for, for being a farmer. Um, but John McEwen was a very uh, canny sort of guy, I suppose. Um, what we'd al it also tells us his age. And so in the case of John McEwen, um, he, we know um, that he was 19 or just over 19 when he returned and took up his block. So he was very young. But in other cases that I've looked at, um, you'll often find details about who's in the family, if the, ma if, the, if the farmer is married, how many children he has. And I think this is very important because when we think of this as being a soldier settlers um, program, we've also got to remember that soldiers had families who went with them to these very difficult places. Okay, so the soldier puts forward his qualifications to be a soldier settler and then he has to go before a lands board and ask them questions to see if they're going to be successful settlers. Now again, if you're a family historian, you should go to this, the report of the land board because you'll find some great information in there. They will then be given permission to occupy the land and they'll then, at that point, they'll take up a lease. Um, here I've got the, the selection purchase lease of John McEwen. Now, again, when you're doing your family history, this has a lot of very good information in it. Um, what it'll tell you, it'll tell you the allotment number that the selection was taken up on. So in the case of um, John McEwen, we know that he took up allotment 43, section E in the parish of Gagari. And so you can then go back to a map and, and find that. And you'll also find on the file a map of the block. Now, a lot of these settlers didn't have enough money to buy that property outright. So what they did is they got advances from the government to buy the land. So in the case of John McEwen, I can see on this file that the capital value of the block he took up um, was £946. He, I think, and if you look at his qualification certificate, you'll see that he only had £50 of savings. So how does he get the almost £900 to, to, to occupy the block? He takes out a loan from the government. So in the case of lots of soldier settlers, they got, it, they got advances to buy stock. They got advances to buy uh, farming machinery. Um, they got advance, advances to put up the fences on, on their property. And I've even seen a, a, a soldier settler's um, file, or I don't know, got his diary too, where he gets advances to buy his weekly meat. And what you have to do is go from those initial application pages to looking at letters that might be deposited on the file, or more importantly, um, bits of documents that real, uh, 
reveal whether the land was continued to be held by your forebear. So one of the most common pieces of evidence you'll find on these files is applications to transfer the block. So in many cases, your forebear um, might get himself in or herself into a situation that they're unable to continue with the block and they might decide that they've had enough of farming and you will find on the file a, a, an application to transfer the block. And that will give you um, the name of, and the date of when that block was transferred from your forebear um, to another person.